Bozeman, Montana, one of the most beautiful places on earth, and somewhere I may or may not have hitchhiked through in the past. It's a crazy story. A small town in Montana that is home to one of the best FCS programs in the nation. Their history of winning in the rivalry with Montana, known as the Brawl of the Wild, has led to a rich tradition and rapid following of loyal fans that make it one of the toughest places to play. This is the story of Montana State football. This is the story of the football program that has found success at every level of football it has played at. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I am planning to release multiple videos a week this season. Also, let me know who you think will win the FCS National Championship this year in the comment section below. Montana State started playing football in 1897, the same year as rival Montana. Early on in their program's history, they struggled to find sustained success. They would have small doses of it, but they could never take it to the next step. From 1931 to 1941, they failed to have a winning season and were 1-10 in 10 against Montana during that time period, being shut out eight consecutive times. But after World War II, things began to change. They had been members of the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference since 1917, but failed to find any success. In 1946, they put together a 5-3-1 record and earned their first ever bowl bid led by Clyde Carpenter. It looked like the program was beginning to go in the right direction until it wasn't. Following that season, the Bobcats would experience seven straight losing seasons. Yet, through the losing seasons, the Bobcats were building something special. In 1952, they moved up to the NAIA level with the rest of the RMAC and would win the 1956 NAIA championship led by freshman captain and two-way center linebacker Sonny Holland. They became the first RMAC school to play in the NAIA championship and finished the season undefeated, going 9-0-1. In 1957, Montana State moved back to the NCAA ranks, leaving the RMAC and playing as an independent from 1957 to 1962. They went on to have six straight winning seasons, including an 8-2 record in 57 and an 8-1 record in 58. In 1963, they became charter members of the Big Sky Conference. Led by head coach Jim Sweeney, the Bobcats went on to win the NCAA Western Regional College Division Championship, a.k.a. the Camellia Bowl. In 1973, Division II football was created, which the Big Sky played under. The Bobcats continued their success, going on to win the 1976 Division II championship, beating Akron 24-13, led by head coach Sonny Holland. They finished the season with a 12-1 record, with their lone loss coming to Fresno State that September. They won their second Big Sky Conference title under Holland that same season. After the 1977 season, at age 39, Holland decided to retire as head coach, finishing with a record of 47-24-1 at Montana State. There is now a statue of him outside Bobcat Stadium. Holland was part of the Bobcats NAIA championship team and led them to their first NCAA championship as a coach. Even when the Big Sky decided to jump to the Division I AA level, the Bobcats continued to find success. They won the conference title in 79, 82-84. In 1984, led by head coach Dave Arnold, the Bobcats would go on to have a magical season. They were coming off a 1-10 season in 1983 and started the 84 season 2-2. Two two. They would win 10 straight en route to their third national title in program history. They went into the playoffs as the third seed, which meant they had the first round bye. During the quarterfinal matchup against Arkansas State, they found themselves down 14. They rallied, scoring 31 unanswered points to win 31-14. They played second-seeded Rhode Island in the semifinals and trailed 20-12 heading into the fourth quarter. They scored 20 unanswered points, including a 97-yard pick six to win 32-20. In the championship game, they beat Louisiana Tech 19-6 in Charleston, South Carolina. Quarterback Kelly Bradley threw for over 300 yards in each playoff game and had eight touchdown passes in the postseason. With that championship in 1984, they became the first college football program to win national championships in three levels of college football. In 1985, they finished the year going 2-9. From 1963 to 1985, they would beat Montana 17 times, which was the most successful time period for the Bobcats in the rivalry's history. They would not win another Big Sky title until 2002. The tail end of the 80s and throughout the 90s, the Bobcats really struggled as a program. 
Earl Salmonson went 15 and 40, and Cliff Heisel went 41 and 47. Between 1985 and 2001, the Bobcats went 63 and 104, including 12 losing seasons. The crazy thing about Salmonson was that before he became head coach of the Bobcats, he led North Dakota State to two straight Division II national titles, going 24 2 1 during that time period. They also hit rock bottom when it came to the Brawl of the Wild, losing 16 straight to the Grizz. Bobcat Stadium, formerly known as Reno H. Sales Stadium, opened in 1973. The stadium is not too far from Yellowstone Park and has a seating capacity of 20,000. As the stadium has evolved over the years, so too has the Bobcat football program. In 2012, the stadium finally added lights, leading to the first night game in program history. It is a beautiful stadium with an amazing mountain backdrop. Its record attendance of 22,037 came during last year's Brawl of the Wild, which also hosted College Game Day. 2002 not only saw the Bobcats snap the 16-game losing streak to Montana, but also saw them return to the NCAA playoffs and win the Big Sky Conference. In 2003, they once again went 7-6, won the conference, and made it to the Division I AA playoffs. In 2005, they won a share of the conference title, and in 2006, they made it to the quarterfinals of the playoffs. Enter Rob Ash. Ash is originally from Des Moines, Iowa, and played quarterback at Cornell, located in Iowa. He started his coaching career at the D3 level, putting together a 51-36-3 record at Juniata College. In 1989, he was hired to be head coach at Drake, who played in the Pioneer League. He put together a 125-63-2 record, winning four conference titles and being named coach of the year three times for the PFL. He is still the winningest coach in school history. In 2007, he was named the next head coach of the Bobcats football program. He was hired to improve the team's academic and off-the-field reputation and found a lot of success early in Bozeman. From 2010 to 2012, he led the Bobcats to three straight Big Sky titles, putting together a 30-8 and record and making it to the quarterfinals twice. The program took a step back in 2013 before showing some promise in 2014. In 2015, after a 5-6 and record, Ash was fired by Montana State. The team had struggled late in the season towards the end of his tenure, and his 2-7 and seven record against the Grizz did not help. Athletic Director Peter Fields spoke on the decision, saying, We have a great stadium. Our fans are tremendous, and football is very important here. We're not going to win the championship every year, but we should be in the mix every year. With the resources we put into it, we should. He'd like to see the team consistently be in the top 10 of the FCS rankings. Ash finished with a 70-38 and 38 record and is the winningest coach in Bobcat history. Jeff Cho took over for Ash as head coach and had to rebuild the program from the ground up. He rebuilt the culture around the team and unified the locker room. Burrow 6 Montana Sport wrote back in 2021, the fiery Cho went 28-22 and 22 overall at Montana State in 18 and 18-14 in Big Sky Conference, but was 19-9 and 11-5 and and in his final two years. Famously, he went 4-0 against rival Montana, which bestowed upon him a kind of folk hero status in Bobcat circles. He led the Bobcats to the biggest comeback in serious history after being down 22-0 in 2018. The Bobcats would come back to win 29-25. They stopped the Grizz on the one-yard line with 14 seconds left, and the game was dubbed the Miracle in Missoula. They made it as far as the FCS semifinals in 2019, losing to North Dakota State. He would leave before the 2021 season to become the co-defensive coordinator and linebacker coach at Texas. He spoke on his departure saying, When I left, this was the team that I knew was going to be built for it. One of the last things I told the players is, I love you. I gave you everything you need to be champions. So go do it. Taking over for Cho was Brent Vegan. Vegan played and coached at North Dakota State, spending years under Craig Bowl. When Bowl took the Wyoming job in 2014, Vegan followed him serving as his offensive coordinator and quarterback coach and later his assistant head coach. When Chris Kleiman left to take the Kansas State head coaching job, Vegan was considered a candidate Vegan was considered a candidate to replace him at North Dakota State. Guys like linebacker Troy Anderson, receiver Lance McCutcheon, quarterback Tucker Rovig, offensive lineman Lewis Kidd, and defensive lineman Chase Benson, Daniel Hardy, and Amandre Williams all helped keep the train on the tracks during the coaching transition. Vegan led Montana State to a 12-3 record and a spot in the FCS national title game in 2021, 
becoming the winningest first-year coach in program history. He followed that up with a 12-2 record and an appearance in the FCS playoff semifinals and a share of the Big Sky title. Now Montana State is one of the best programs at the FCS level and could make a run in the playoffs once again. While firing Ash might have been gutsy, it led to the two program-changing hires leading the Bobcats to being viewed in the upper echelon of the FCS level. They play rival Montana in the Brawl of the Wild this Saturday. What do you think? Who will win the FCS title this year? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching and as always remember to embrace the grind.